How to Animate Using Keyframes in Premiere Pro. I'm David O with Biddle MCOM. Let's get started. First off, what are keyframes and why should you care? Well, all a keyframe is, is a marker, but this marker marks a change in the parameter you have selected. Let me show you. First, I'll create a ball using my ellipse tool and holding the shift key will give me a perfect circle. I can make this ball any size that I want, just not too big, and I'll make it my favorite color. I'll center the ball to the screen, and now I'll switch to the rectangle tool and hold the shift key to make a perfect small square at the edge of the ball. About right here is just fine, and I'll make it a different color. Now, because the ball and the square are part of the same graphic layer, they'll move together, which means we've made a ball with a square on it. Now let's select the graphic layer and head to the effect controls panel. This area here represents the entire length of the asset that we have selected in our timeline. In this case, it's our graphic layer. In the effect controls, we can manipulate the appearance of the graphic layer by changing these settings. And if I were to click on this stopwatch icon on one of the settings, it will activate my keyframes for that specific setting. This diamond shape is my keyframe. It's marking the scale of my graphic layer at 100. Now, if I move forward in time and change the scale setting to 150, Premiere Pro automatically will add another keyframe. So if I drag my playhead to the first keyframe and hit play, we've created this simple zoom animation. Cool. Now let's remove this animation by clicking on the stopwatch again and deleting all the keyframes. Now my ball is scaled out to 150, but I can reset that to the original size just by hitting this swirly arrow thing right here. I'm not sure what this button is called. Anyway, our ball is back to its original size. If I do the same thing in the position settings, move the ball to the left side of the screen, then click the stopwatch, and now move my playhead forward in time, and move the ball to the right side of the screen, I have created this animation. And if I drag my keyframes closer together, it will make my animation faster. And if I pull them farther apart, it will make the animation slower. I can make this animation even better by adding keyframes to another parameter. Let's use rotation. By clicking this arrow in my position setting, I can move to the next keyframe to the left. Now when I click the stopwatch on my rotation setting, a keyframe will be created that is in sync with my position keyframe. And if I click this arrow in my position settings, it will go to the next keyframe to the right. And now I can change my rotation settings to 360 degrees and now a keyframe will be created that is perfectly in sync with my position setting. Now let's see what we've created. Much cooler, right? When you start combining movement in different settings, you can really change up the dynamic of simple animations. And in the effect controls panel, you can also refine your animations and make them move more realistically. If I select both keyframes at the start of the animation and right click, then go to temporal interpolation, I can select ease out. Then select the other two. Right click, temporal interpolation, now select ease in. This will add some more smooth fluidity to the movement. Adding the easing options make it start out slow, then build up some speed, then slow down again when it's about to stop. Much cooler. Keyframing isn't just for making balls roll around either. You can use these same actions to make your project more cinematic and make boring shots a little more interesting. And keyframing works great with effects too. If I add the tint effect to this clip, I can make the image gradually go from black and white to full color just by using keyframes. Plus, you can use keyframes in the timeline as well. If I right click on the clip and go down to show clip keyframes, 
I can select time remapping and then click speed. Now by holding control or command and clicking on the speed envelope or selecting the pen tool and doing this, I can now add a subtle speed ramp that makes this ridiculous skeleton build up speed before he starts dancing. <laughs> Dance you ridiculous skeleton. Keyframing can be tough to master, but the benefits it can add to your project are unlimited. The creativity is all up to you. If you have any questions, call, text, or email if you know me. If not, leave them down in the comments. Thanks for watching.